Good morning, this is Jennifer Shepard with the Shepherd Center for Integrative Health, and we specialize in identifying and problem solving the multiple reasons why you struggle with the symptoms that you do, how your body has accommodated to a lifetime of things that have happened to you, and we then there use our hands as we are manual therapists to identify and restore healthy, efficient structure of whatever healthy, efficient functioning of joints, soft tissue, fascia, and very often the organs with inside the container so that the body is able to work and do its job optimally and with more ease. So what I want to talk about this morning is back pain. I had a conversation with uh, a good friend of mine, actually with my brother, and uh, hey Jen, I've had another episode where my back went out on me, it took me down. So we talk about earthquakes and tremors. And when you have those big episodes where wow, my, 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 I hurt my back and it took me down, like I'm hobbling, I'm limping for a couple days or I'm on the, on the couch for a handful of days. Uh, again, it makes us think, wow, okay, we really did, like you did something pretty significant, very, very likely involving the disc. So when I meet my patients with back pain, um, no matter where they're on their back pain journey, I always wanna know how many episodes have you had where it really took you out? because those times when it really takes you out, very often you've done some significant damage to the disc. And what's important for us to understand, and it's not like that one thing that you did that did the damage, but it's the accumulation of traumas. And you know, as I explain this to my brother again, you know, I've been watching him move for a long time and he's like, hey, I got some back pain here, some back pain there. And again, it's something that we really haven't dedicated the time to really spend the time and treat this on him. You know, hey, fine, we don't live close to each other. And I've told him, you know, you need to get your back treated, but it really is hard to find practitioners who look at the big picture, who have the hands to be able to identify and restore healthy, efficient mechanics of the lumbo-pelvic region. And again, most people, again, yes, they will you know, see their chiropractor and sometimes that can be a, handful, a helpful thing, but they're only addressing the mechanics of the back. And again, as I watch these patients, as I watch them move, there's so much more to that. There's stuff on the front of the back, perhaps scar tissue from an appendix or diverticulitis. These are all things that show up in the clinic that contribute to inefficient mechanics of the pelvis, of the lumbar spine, putting those discs, putting that low back in a precarious position where it doesn't take much, boom, to tip it over and injure that disc a little further and knock you out. So a, a big, big player in this also are falls to the pelvis, falls to the tailbone. So that's why it's critical for us to, we watch every patient move, we watch them walk, you know, how are they getting through space? And again, if you can't get through space, through something well, you find a compensatory strategy. In my brother's case and, and in many patient cases, again, everyone presents different. So there is no one size fits all for back pain. Again, it all depends on what have you accumulated, which direction did forces come in, what's been compressed, what's compensated. Um, in women, we see a lot more uterus bladder involvement affecting the lumbar spine, bring in C-sections. It's a whole, nother, a whole nother facet that we look at with regard to how do all of these pieces contribute to the strain forces that are happening maybe subtly on a daily level, just a little strain, a little strain, a little strain, and then all of a sudden you do something big and then boom, you blow it up. So again, back to my brother's case as we're talking on the phone, I said, very, very, very likely, I said, you know, I've, I watched you move, I felt your pelvis before. Again, there's so much compression, so he used to skateboard a lot, so falling, bam, on, on the tailbone. So very, very likely, and actually I know for certain. So again, there's a lot of flexion at the tailbone. So again, compression, so the tailbone, Kind of here. So flexion, boom, right? Compression. So tailbone gets flexed. A lot of compression of the coccyx into the sacrum. Compression, right? Those compressive forces have continued all the way up. Okay, so picture coccyx, sacrum, lumbar spine. All those compressive forces have gone all the way up through. So those compressive forces, as we talked recently, right? Kinetic energy is coming in, boom, stored potential energy. So, and those mechanical forces that have come in, again, they create compression, they create a little bit of inflammation and things just get stuck. So they lose their healthy give, they lose their healthy shock absorption, they lose their ability to move. So again, he, I've told him, I said, you know, likely this is accumulative stuff over a long period of time. And he's always in a state of compromise. So he's always in a state of compression, in a subtle state of flexion. So we know that discs tend to, you know, in the flex position, there's many, many studies that show that when you go into flexion, it creates increased load on the disc. So many forces are at play in, in his particular case. So he's always in a relative state of flexion. So that disc is always in a little bit of 
pressure, strain. He sits all day long for his work, and I guarantee you he's not sitting on his pelvic floor. It's hard to do that 24 seven, and that's something that we just haven't had time to talk about and work on as far as, okay, let's really, let's really tackle this back pain so you don't have another episode down the road. But, so he's always in a state of a little bit of flexion, so there's always a little bit of increased strain on that disc. Who knows, throw on some inflammation. He's, he's a clean eater. He's gone through some great functional med work. So he's pretty clean on the inflammatory wise. But again, structurally, he is vulnerable. So our job, I said, what we need to do, I said, we really do. It's, it's not a one time, I treat you and you're better. And again, what'll happen is eventually he'll get better. So his pain will resolve. He'll get back to what he's doing because, right, that's the body, the body's, okay, I figured out what I need to do to pivot. How do I protect this lumbar spine? How do I protect this disc? And he'll go back to what he's doing. But again, what we talk about, again, as I call them earthquakes, right? When we ask how many times have you had a big episode without addressing the underlying mechanics of lumbar spine, sacrum, pelvis, tailbone, front of the lumbar spine, the anominates, how everything happens in gait. If, if we don't address that, it's gonna happen again. And the, each time you have a big damage to your disc, um, discs don't heal well, right? So what we start to see is it starts to come more frequently. So maybe it happens once a year, or maybe it happened like once, like six years ago, and then it happened again. And then it starts to happen more frequently. And then that's where we start getting into more trouble, significant damage, because once we've damaged that disc significantly, there is a point sometimes where we get to the point of no return and we do have to have surgical intervention if that disc really ruptures, if it uh, herniates and we get some fragments that sit on that nerve. I mean, that is, you just gotta get in there, there and then clean that up. But the great thing is, is knowing, hey, here, here's this big earthquake that happened. We've really got to address the mechanics so this doesn't happen again. And the great thing is, is when we restore the mechanics, we get the strain off that lumbar spine. We get the strain off that disc. Most people don't have a big episode like that again. Unless, like in my case, right? I went tubing and had bam, 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 right? Like we learned the things that, um, and I didn't have a big episode, but it was just enough where, ooh, I, I irritated that disc a little bit. So we learn about what, you know, once we've had damage, we're a little bit more vulnerable anyway. So we do have to be absolutely aware of the things that could be more provocative and could tip us over into trouble like deadlifts. Again, I think most of you know my stance on deadlifts. I'm not a fan. Again, most of us have lumbar spines that are just not as healthy as they can be. And again, risk reward, it's for, for me and for my patients, I say it is not worth the risk because I've had so many patients come in after the kiss of deadlifts. So, but again, we learn here's here's things that you really need to be cautious of and you know we hate to take people out of things but we just need to be aware like knowing if you do this thing and all this impact on a disc that's already a little fragile it could push you into trouble so you know pick and choose what you do or if you do that make sure that core is really firing you're taking good care of yourself how can you support that back as you go into that act Activity. So lumbar spine mechanics, again, back pain does not have to be hard. It does not have to be elusive and it doesn't have to continue once we identify all of the, again, lifetime accumulation of forces, right? Back pain didn't just happen one time. It's, there's all these forces that have been leading up, leading up, leading up, leading up, and then boom, right? The straw that broke the camel's back, or again, a great mentor of mine, Vicki, you know, she talks about this little apple tree branch and you bend it once, it's fine. You bend it five times, it's okay. You bend it 135 times, eventually it's gonna break. And that's what happens when we have increased forces, abnormal mechanics into the lumbar spine that are driven by other things. So as we reduce these forces that have come into the system, we restore healthy, efficient mechanics at the front of the lumbar spine, back the lumbar spine, through the pelvis, even into the feet sometimes, you know, just making sure that gait is as efficient as possible. There is such a reduced likelihood of injury to the disc when the spine is in a healthier state of balance.